Hello, everybody. It's really good to see you again. Um, so, today is a very special day. Uh, it's a historic day in the life of New Community. Sunday, 9th October 22, is really important in your history. It's the day that the leadership baton is officially passed on from Billy and Caroline to Theo and Sarah. It's a changing of the guard. Spiritual leadership is handed on and a new era begins. And it will, of course, be a new era based on the vision and the values and the DNA that has shaped so much of new community to date because Theo and Sarah have been serving in leadership roles here for a long time. But inevitably, fresh new distinctives will emerge that will be absolutely right for this new season, for this new part of the race that new community is called to run. And I'm really pleased for you as a church community that you get to have the gift that Theo and Sarah are to you. You know, in John chapter 10, verses 11 to 13, it talks about the difference between hired hands and true shepherds. Let me read them to you, these verses from John chapter 10. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not love the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. And I think over the last few years, one of the things that was revealed during COVID was how some leaders retreated and some leaders stepped up. And in Theo and Sarah, I saw leaders that stepped up. Leaders who were the opposite of hired hands, but leaders who dug deep. They gave of themselves week after week to be true shepherds, laying their lives down to be a non-anxious presence amongst you mostly through live streaming into your homes week after week, never failing to bring life and hope and peace amongst the storm. I was even chatting to a leader from a church in Norfolk just this week. And uh, this is a church that has recently joined Pioneer, as in a couple of weeks ago, but they had been journeying and exploring, you know, joining Pioneer for a couple of years. And he told me that during COVID, he would do his own live stream to his church and then go back home. And the first thing he would do would watch Theo and Sarah live streaming to you guys because these are his words. They were so uplifting. That was exact words. They were so uplifting and they provided him with a model and ideas of what to do the following week. (laughs) And I don't think you realize that It wasn't just you guys that were being led and inspired by Theo and Sarah. Actually, in leading you, they were actually leading and inspiring many other churches and church leaders around this country. You know, it seemed effortless on their part. They were amazing, weren't they? They were, you know, just from their home and it just always was happening so effortlessly. But I know It's only possible to show up like that week after week after week to be so visible, to be so present, to be so relationally connected and engaged, even with all of the difficulties of being physically remote and disconnected from each other. It's only possible because it comes from a deep place of calling, of love, and of being a true shepherd. That's where it comes from. It comes from a deep sense of love for God's people that means you're able to show up like that week after week. Otherwise, it's simply too exhausting. 
you know, that was an exhausting time for many church leaders around the country. But I really want to commend Theo and Sarah of what they did and how they did it. They served you so incredibly well. And so I feel like we have seen demonstrated huge love and huge commitment to you guys as a church community. These guys are called to leadership. Yes, it's true, but they are specifically called to leadership here in this church community. And I really commend them to you. There has been love, there has been dedication, and there has been service that only true shepherds display. And so today we simply get to mandate and to kind of make official, give full authority to what they have already been doing. And that's actually the very best way for leadership transition to happen. And it's a testimony to Billy and Caroline. They've created that space. They've allowed leaders to come through. There's been space created at the table so that all that's happening now is we are just kind of I guess we're applauding what has already been happening. So it's actually a wonderful way to see leadership transition happen. Now, you know, don't you, those of you who've been around Pioneer for a while, that we see leadership essentially as a serving role. It's not about us. It's not for us. The call to leadership is a call to service. People don't enter into Christian leadership for unbelievable pay packets, Let me tell you, they really don't. They don't enter into Christian leadership because of power and prestige. They enter into Christian leadership because of being obedient to the call of God, to serve him, to glorify him, and to serve others. We read, don't we, in Mark 10, Jesus describes servant leadership like this, verses 42 to 45. Jesus called them together and said, you know, that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And Theo and Sarah have a proven track record of being those kinds of leaders, servant leaders. And what I really love about them is their character matches their gifting. I have seen consistent integrity, authenticity, and humility in them. They are leaders worthy of your respect. On top of that, Christ-like character is also tremendous gifting. I mean, you get all that thrown in for free. You know, I mean, if you look at the criteria for leadership in 1 Timothy 3, it's mostly about character. And then there's a couple of bits, the ability to teach and hospitality. And so you've got all this Christ-like character in Theo and Sarah And you get their ability to teach, to preach, to be hospitable, to host the Holy Spirit, to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to be able to build healthy team, to be able to cast vision, to be able to connect people to God and to each other. I really rate them and I want you to know that. So new community, make it a joy for them to lead you. Because you can trust them. They will do you good. So I want to ask you to listen to them well. I want to ask you to do what they ask of you and do it wholeheartedly and do it cheerfully. I want to ask you to serve each other in the way that they will serve you. I want to ask you to encourage them often and be specific with your encouragement. You know, often when you're in church leadership, you might get lots of general encouragement, but very specific criticism. (laughs) So it's brilliant if you as a church community can give very specific encouragement, the things you really 
appreciate about them. You know, when they have obviously given of themselves over and over again, be specific in your encouragement and support them. Because the fact is, the more encouragement and enjoyment they get in leading you, the more they become the fullest gift that they are meant to be to you. So just as we commissioned Billy and Caroline yesterday into their new roles today, we get to commission Theo and Sarah into theirs. There's a little passage in Numbers 27 where we see Joshua, the leader after Moses, being appointed and commissioned. Let me just read these few verses to you. Verses 15 to 23. Moses said to the Lord, may the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to go out and to come in before them, one who will lead them out and bring them in so that the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership and lay your hand on him. Have him stand before Eleazar the priest and the entire assembly and commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority so that the whole Israelite community will obey him. So Moses did as the Lord commanded. He took Joshua, had him stand before Eleazar the priest and the whole assembly. Then he laid his hands on him and commissioned him as the Lord instructed through Moses. And so that's essentially what's going to be going on today. We're passing the leadership of new community to a man and a woman in whom there is the spirit of leadership who are called to be shepherds amongst God's people. And so just like back then when Joshua stood before the whole assembly, had hands laid on him and was prayed for and commissioned. So we're going to get to have Theo and Sarah stand before the whole assembly and have hands laid on them and they will be prayed for and commissioned. And we believe, don't we, that as we do that, a new spiritual authority will be conferred and there comes with that a new weight to their words and to their prayers. I really believe that you as a community are going to start to see new levels of breakthrough. You're going to be together uh, contesting into some things where you are going to see significant kingdom advancement because there's a spiritual principle that comes when hands get laid on people where there's the spirit of leadership and the whole assembly gets behind that, kingdom advancement happens. You know, it was Joshua that took the people of God into the promised land. So I want, to, I want you to raise your levels of faith that what happens as we lay hands on Theo and Sarah and we get behind them, you know, with our, not just with our words, but with our hearts. I want to ask you to almost speak to your spirit. Speak to your spirit to get behind these people on whom the spirit of leadership is so evident. And there will be a shift in all kinds of kingdom advancement. And so before I hand back over to Billy, I just, um, I have a Bible here that I'm going to, I'm going to give to you. Um, and it's a Bible with illustrations in it from actually a friend of mine uh, who lives in Loughborough, who's an artist. And what I like about this Bible is there's lots of space in the margins where you can write your thoughts, your insights, your revelation. You can perhaps doodle, you can draw pictures. And I do believe there's something about this new season for new community under your leadership that's going to be about a deeper confidence together in the authority of God's word and a deeper confidence together in the gifts of the spirit. That's what I see is going to be happening. There's going to be a real joy released amongst you as you go deeper in the beauty of the work of the Spirit and the power of the Word of God. So I just felt it was important and symbolic to gift you uh, with a Bible. 
as the source of the authority that you have in which to lead, the sure foundation upon which to build and the plumb line of the faith that we share. So I want to really encourage you, don't depart from it. You know, uh, some of the Anglican services talk about let the word of God dwell in you richly. Because as that happens, actually for a whole community, you will go deeper. Because leaders reproduce who they are. And so I'm really excited about the future, this next era, this next part of the race that you're called to run. It will be characterized by a fresh love of the word of God and operating in gifts of the spirit. And so let me give this to you now and then I'll pass over to Billy and we're going to pray for you.